We have in the center of our body this great seat, the Tao, Aruta, the gateway to light. At what point this gate opens to the left and to the right, we can say that through the two kidneys, the left kidney and the right kidney, it spills over. There is a power or energy that makes this happen. We call it qi, the impulse, the energy. Heat and a touch are produced. At the same time, we will call that touch yin, and the heat we will call yang. They are liquids, a vis viscous substance, where the body begins to form. The liquids that are denser and most sensual, we will call yin. They nourish the marrow, spinal fluid, and gradually they become less viscous and less important when it comes to joints and so on. All of this generates what we can call a state of coolness and gen gener generalized humidity that we will call yin. Obviously, the liquids lose value as they become less thick and more abundant, such as blood, sweat, and tears. So, the seed opens. Or Tao, as the Chinese group say, or Arutam, as the Shua people will say, we encounter an impulse, an energy, or vitality, that has heat and a caress, that are the combination of various liquids, ranging from the most valuable, sick and unique, to the more abundant ones that we can waste almost as we please, because it is possible to renew them easily. From this gateway, the roots, are, the roots of our two legs begin to grow. And from this, the stem of the plant, our spinal cord, grows, which forms until it reaches our brain. Our brain is a flower and the fruit, and they are the five senses. Like any other flower during its blossom, the brain contains its elements, color, aroma, touch, and so on. As I mentioned before, this fact is illustrated in our body where we find a lower center, where that seed, its roots, are contained, and also in our other limbs, from a foot connected to the earth and from there to our legs and joints, to the back, to the waist, our abdomen, to the chest, and to the head with its five senses. Based on this, a whole method of therapeutic practice was created, including acupuncture, based on the understanding of the interaction between humans and the world, as well as their cycles and seasons, and the balance between all then. A person can be understood and diagnosed. In other words, one can understand at what point that equilibrium with that eternity we call Arutam was abandoned, and one can help that person through different means, such as acupuncture, herbal medicine, or shamanism, to return to that place and thus regain the health they were born with. So let's talk a little about the world and the individual. Is there or isn't there a relationship between us and everything that happens outside? One of the first ways to approach what happened from our birth until this present moment is to compare it to what happens every year in the world and in its many cycles that, regardless of, the, of their length, share the same movement. The world, the seasons, move in a circular motion from left to right, the sun and the moon, the day and the night, Dust, dawn, and moon. They always follow the same movement, like a perfect circle, and it's perfect because it's the movement of unity, the movement, movement of Arutan. 
Arutan is everything, great perfection that contains all exist, all times, all movements, and although in this state of great perfection there is no difference because everything is in a relationship of equality and return, there must also be a method of analysis to understand more or less how all of this can happen and how there can be an energy that has always been created and has always existed and never runs out. This can be investigated and if we looked at that crystal in which we rest in eternity and from which we were born, we will see all the details in this world. We will see a kind of creation that constantly flows and respects certain principles. These principles are on what we are going to base our understanding of medicine and our self-knowledge. In a way, that feeling always flows, always is born and dies and changes and changes, but it always remains. If that feeling only remained like that, simply being, without creating, destroying, it, changing and being born once again, the feeling would simply be something there that cannot remain in eternity, renewing itself. But we can say that this feeling is always new, that it is always surprising itself, always embracing itself, because all beings are born, go and come. The feeling does not end with those beings, uh, but it continues to sprout and sprout, and we are that feeling, that crystal. We are not a spark that ignites and extinguishes in a moment. We are all these sparks and the force that brings forth all those sparks. And understanding this is what can help people overcome uncertainty, ignorance and fear, because ultimately, it is fear that drives us to commit atrocities towards this world, towards our fellow human beings and other creatures as well. I mentioned earlier that when that seed opened and emerged with that ink, with that warmth and with that touch, when all that happened, let's say, even though it's only a speculation, we did not exist. We could label that as a kind of night, winter, or a zero point, a void where, nevertheless, we know there was a great pause waiting for the right moment to explode and reveal all its potential. When that seed opened up, light was born and it began to grow and expand. We can refer to this as spring, when the roots start to develop. The stem and so on. This spring corresponds to another organ, the liver. The liver is the organ that brings us so many problems as individuals, just as the kidneys bring problems of weakness and deficiency due to a lack of energy or moisture to control the fire, the liver only bring us, brings us problems almost always associated with the excess, excess, extension, blockages. Because what can you do to a spring? Well, you could go to the ground and start plugging the holes where the seeds sprout, preventing them from coming out. It's a lost and futile battle to do that, and if you start blocking that emerging power of our liver, we could be creating a bomb ready to explode, and the more we surprise that energy, the worse the damage will be when it eventually happens even leading to death in certain accidental cases, as we have seen. After that spring, evolution continues until we reach our peak, midday or summer, when there is more heat and power connected to the heart. And after summer, the fall begins. Before sunset, the day starts to cool down. There is less heat and humidity increases and moisture increases, anticipating the presence of 
night as it breaks the daytime fire of Yang. This tree night or in-between moment corresponds to this spleen and it's a time when enthusiasm, passion and joy cease making room for reflection. We'll all reach a moment where we will reflect, we'll intellectualize a little and we'll think about the meaning of purpose of being here if we had forgotten it at some point. Then finally, the coldness comes, Dean increases and autumn arrives. Everything becomes dormant during our twilight and we gradually fade away until we return to the winter from which energy will emerge again. And when we wake up, even if we feel a bit cold, warmth will gradually return and we will go through the entire cycle again. These cycles are simply part of the presence of our Part of that blissful, blissful embrace where sparks jump up in ceremony and in our vision, that delightful feeling always present but with different ways of coming and going and of drawing visions in our, visions in our ceremonies. Feeling in this is this circle that always involves this birth, so to be eternal like a sea that ebbs and flows. Does the sea or the day ever get tired of flowing? No. Arutan, the great perfection, is a feeling that has always been and precisely corresponds to that, to be inexhaustible. Man is completely connected to the world. All the cycles of man correspond to those of the world. And, if, and we can even add more. We can look with that magnifying glass and find more cycles in cells and stars even we can see incalculable cycles if we, ex if we stretched out time. But we don't need to do that. Just by seeing that there is a day, a night and seasons, we know enough to live. But I insist that the entire universe, if we were to analyze it all together, respond to cycles of or joy, embraces of Arunta in this great perfection, embraces that renew and are always success, an ecstasy that is always born and reborn. We are that life. Although I have a symbolism of seasons, unobservable cycles, we are that force that makes everything endure in that art. This is energy, and let's add, these are functions, but even though organs emanate from that purpose or that tendency, if you remove the organ or whatever it is, it is not as if this energy disappeared and you would die. That is to say, yang is not in the right kidney and yang in the left, nor is a late summer spleen, and if you remove this spleen, there is no late summer and you die. None of that. The truth is that in ancient times, organs were not removed. If you ask me what can happen, I can't answer you. No one knows the ultimate consequences of extracting viscera and organs from people. We need a few generations and many clinical cases to, through empiricism, see what could happen and write reports. And even then, we don't know if such reports will be reliable. Let's go back then to the five seasons. It's night time, um, we wake up, winter begins to awaken spring, we, op we open our eyes and the kidney opens. Automatically, the impulse of Arutna and the impulse of Tao, he starts to move and take us out of some place connected to the sky where we are at rest. And just as it happens with the dawn, with a little more time, that energy begins to generate heat. And then the lips start to moisten, and so do the mouth, the eyes, it's a sacred touch is sent. In other words, energy is light, impulse. Heat comes after exposure to light. And later on, the moisture that begins to evaporate from the earth. 
So in that order, there are people who wake up in the morning and the first thing they say is, I'm going to stretch. And I ask them, why are you going to stretch? And they respond, because I'm a yoga teacher and in the morning my body is stiff. And I reply, yeah, but that's also when it's going to break. Wait for the blessing of the Spirit to come to your body. And they insist, no, it's now when I find a little resistance. These people are excessively elastic. They can't find anything else to stretch. In fact, they think they are too stretched and lack strength. I ask them to wait. For the blessing of the spirit to moisten their body. Because what is dry and stiff now, if you stretch it too much, will break more easily. When the blessing arrives, the kidneys fill up or activate. And that's when we feel that we can get up and do things. Where does all that energy go? It goes to the liver. To the spring. The more this spring is activated, the more we are willing to do. Until we reach a summer where we are in the fullness of heat. There is not so much moisture at that moment because there is much more heat and activity. The moisture will come again once the heat subsides because there is always a moment when the heat dries up. That's why those who are subjected to very high temperatures in their metabolism due to anxiety or stress are dried up dramatically. The fire starts sharpening their bones and consuming them to the most extreme cases. At the end of summer, we can do the most dramatic and intense activities. That's when we have the most energy and is our moment of greatest capacity. This is the awakening that occurs in the world every day and in every season. The seasons are incredible as they easily show that reality. And we're simply an extension of that eternity, of that blissful feeling that is. Being born, dying and becoming unique and better each time. Although it was never better because it was already the best. Let's say it was always the best, but in each moment it will always give us, give everything to be the best. So the kidney will awaken and give the strength to the liver to spring. It is very important when our life begins, truly see that there is heat, that there is an impulse that reaches said spring. If the kidneys are really cold, without energy and asleep, who will push? You won't even get out of bed. For example, an older person gets up in the morning and their body doesn't warm up anymore. You have to give them a good dose of caffeine, a baby. With that little boost of energy, some heat reaches where there is none. But what happens if a spring, a liver, doesn't receive no energy? What can that person feel in their mind? Depression, exactly. If enough energy doesn't arrive, the person doesn't feel like living, and they lack motivation to live. Everything becomes much more difficult for them. First, if a person used to do things when they were children and now they don't, and if they also say that they feel heavy, cold and lacking energy, well, that's it. A depressed person without desire or motivation. Do you think that person, for example, can feel inspiration, have creativity, be creative? No, they can't. At most, they can reproduce what has already been done, like a sort of machine, but because they are obligated or tied to it. But they cannot create. Do you know why? Because creation, inspiration, comes from that light and heat that life gave us, from that spring. This is all. If you don't have that, there is no creation, no matter how much you try. In fact, in music or art and painting, what you will create are things that represent that emptiness, that coolness. For music and art, for poetry, for painting, for painting, I need extremely high levels of energy. Many times, if I don't have those levels of energy and I can't make music, it's frustrating. 
That's why the great artists, the masters, the religious men were, in a way, chased. They decided that instead of wasting time, for example, fighting with a woman or with, a ch or with children or with whatever, they were going to use that energy to create. Well, many others didn't stay celibate. They had wonderful partners, both men and women. And they created wonderfully. It all depends because there is not just one way in this reality. But keeping the kidneys in good condition was key. That's why Riman is insistent. Sex is very good, but you must remember that an ejaculation will cause the gene to creep. The best of the brain and the marrow and the bones should be used to create a child with great strength and the best possible chances of the Bible. A jutam in its vibration always wants what comes next to be the best of the best. The best child that comes from the best moment, the good best spring, the best sunrise, the best song among feathers. Arutam always seeks that, and it is that vibration of being born and dying that never truly dies, that vibration that honors, honors the song of wishing, for example, in ceremony. The kidneys must be preserved. Notice that animals really know this. And they have sex at the right time, and that's it. And then there are no more moments. The rest of the time, they preserve this energy. We need heat, essential fluids, viscous liquids for our whole body, including the nervous system, to function perfectly, perfectly. So we have to protect ourselves. The first thing is to preserve the heat, the what's given to us by our father and mother and its flame. Because this must burn slowly and in the best way. Making sure that the flame is at a perfect point so that we can have the longest possible life and perform well. But the kidneys won't cool down or dry out of being just because of sex. Stress and a very fast metabolism will also dry us out. It's like the summer, and summer is not like an ejaculation that dries the being quickly. Summer is a heat that comes from the sky, lasts for a long time, and eventually dries the earth. Prolonged stress dries the moisture in our kidneys. So life is about caring for our feeling. I always say that we have to take care of our feeling, taking care of what we have without wasting it, to obtain the best of every moment, as Arutan Bull happened. Many times, my students in other countries tell me, Raman, this was the best ceremony of my life. And I tell them, well, when every ceremony becomes the best ceremony of your life, welcome to feeling like Arutan, because today was the best sunrise, but tomorrow will also be the best. The best sunrise, although in reality they were all over the best, this is the great perfection, Arutam. We generate heat from the kidneys, but everything is liquid. The essence, the entire seed, all that viscous liquid flowing in the marrow and in the most important parts of our nervous system is generated at the gate. At the gate of life, in the center of our body, we need that yin, that moisture, to balance all the fire in our body. There is a difference between a hot and a dry summer in the Sahara and a hot summer in the Amazon. Moisture controls heat. In the Sahara, you will die from the scorching sun. Well, that wouldn't happen in the Amazon due to the moisture. This is the yin and the yang, natural balance of life. Where does the seed grow? In the humid heat, where the sun doesn't scorch and where, the, and where there is nourishing, yin in its touch, or in the arid and barren desert of sand. Humid heat, the end of summer, is a moment of life. 
And that's why we have an explosion in the Amazon. As a friend of mine used to say, with leaves is sprouting upon all the leaves. Life wants warmth and moisture. In the fields too, in places with seasons, we see that at that moment of warmth and humidity, everything sprouts, and then it ends. And that's what we have to take care of in our city. There must be enough water, and we need to drink enough water, eat raw green leaves and consume raw roots to support that yin. Certain foods support yin more. For example, whiter and redder foods support fluids and blood. Darker foods support more viscous fluids, such as orchid and or Romania. Although Romania also supports the blood. That's how we observe the colors, the flavors, and the properties of certain foods, plants, roots, and so on. We should never let yin dry out and heat. Never. How we heat is the same. How do we take care of the heat? For example, the heat of the kidneys. If we spend our heat, if we don't bundle up, if we don't take care of ourselves, if we live in damp and cold places, we will deplete our resources prematurely. In fact, people living in poor conditions feel hey, or depressed, and slower because they're young, the kidney fire is very, very low. How do we take care of ourselves? By keeping a fire always burning in our home to keep it warm. By bundling up, even if you think coldness is not a problem. And some say it to me, but I can't handle it. To which I respond that I am glad for them, but I still have to say this to ensure that they live their best possible life until their last days. <laughs> taking care of our yang, taking care of our heat in the kidney, nurturing and protecting the yang, all of that will allow the impulse of life to reach the liver in the best possible way, because the liver is what will awaken us, what will break forth our spring. That's when everything done well beneath the earth will emerge. Why? Because the sun, high in the sky, is calling for everything on earth to grow. And it's what also happens to us at dawn. Every sunrise calls us from the heavens and brings us forth from the depths of our being. And that is beautiful. It's even poetic. To awaken with the perfect degree of humidity and strength that is with energy, feeling warm, without nerves, anxiety or stress, but with serenity, full of vitality, is to find yin in balance with yang. We wake up together, and here is the A person who wakes up in the morning with very little yin, very little water, lot of yang, finds that just waking up to life is already torture. They are angry, upset, so on. And maybe they are taking something to relax, you know, whatever, because they can't keep up at this pace. Then everything becomes complicated, because if I take a pill to relax, the yang decreases for a while, but it can't function like that either, so they drink a cup of coffee. And there we start the crazy roller coaster of constant ups and downs that we think we can control, but that in time, Aruta will show us otherwise. We don't dictate those cycles. It's not in the will of our identity. So, when we wake up, yin and yang must do so together and at the same level, with the first controlling the second, and not waking up feeling cold and tired, because it, then we won't get up. If there is too much yin, there is so much coldness that there is already humidity. If we don't dry the moisture in our body, our joints, joints will also feel dumb and we will have rheumatism, or we will feel unwell, heavy and slow. So we can't wake up with low energy either. We have to take care of everything at once. What can deplete our yin? 
We already said living at too high a pace for too long. And people make excuses, saying that this and that happened to them and they can't afford to slow down. But the truth is, they will either die or suffer in life, so they have to find a solution. It is never an excuse to live with the anxiety and nerves that we live with, consuming yang with constant fire. There is no excuse for such a thing. Life is too short. There are products like alcohol, for example, that burn, irritate and dehydrate body fluid and drain the best of our yin. The alcohol would quickly consume that yin. As I already mentioned, the loss of seed for men especially occurs through the ejaculation and it is a direct way to eat the best of oneself. It rapidly decreases gene levels. And then there are all these stimulants, drugs, citria, etc., that accelerate the metabolism and worsen the situation of yin in our kidney. The more the yin decreases, the more imbalance there will be until the moment comes when we are boiling. Boiling not only in liver, now in liver, but also in our character, with a level of resistance, tension, self-identification. That is, I am this, I am that, with outbursts of anger and so on. All of that affects the heart. And instead of reaching a balanced, beautiful or pleasant summer, we arrive at a completely dry summer where plants wither, where we hurt ourselves, where everything is irritated, burned, and, or, and, when, and we can no longer open our eyes because the sunlight is too much for how dry we are and all the fire we have inside. That's how we end up with headaches, ringing in the ears due to high blood pressure. Your attention? Perhaps cannot imagine that this will happen. During the winter, everything seems fine, but in reality, we are doing everything wrong. And now, in summer, is when we will, when we will actually experience it. The intensity of the heat at the peak. That's where the heat strokes, high blood pressure, heart attacks, and so on, come in. But well, this is a case of imbalance in our kidney. They are dry of yin and yang. During the summer, in that weather, the kidneys go crazy. This relationship, the subtle and fragile balance between yin and yang is broken, and that equals death. And if not dead, if modern science saves our life with the methods we have in hospital, there will still be consequences that the body doesn't know how to manage because the body is not prepared to survive a wound like that. So as we mentioned before, the deficiency of yin in the kidney causes an increase in body temperature. And it's not just about the liver. The yang of the liver comes all uncontrolled due to the lack of yin and rise up towards the head of the heart. That's not the only problem. And again, deficiency leads to an increase in body temperature. In other words, that person will feel warmer because in the end, the yin in the kidney controls everything, all the body temperature and so on. The person will feel hot and at times, depending on the state of yin and the severity of dryness, that heat can be uncontrolled and uncom uncomfortably noticeable as is sometimes the case in menopause when a woman begins to dry up and experiences severe hot flushes.
So, whenever the yin decreases, there will be more heat in the body and it will be noticed. If not during the day, then during the night, when your body needs to cool down to rest, and it cannot manage to do it completely. It will cause lighter, more shallow and more restless sleep. Remember that only a perfect balance of yin can ensure that when night comes, we fall asleep easily. Since there is a slight disturbance, the night begins to burn, as some people say. The night alters you, sometimes more, sometimes less, although it doesn't matter because what that minimal yin deficiency already disturbs the sleep. And sometimes that disruption of sleep, depending on the state of the liver, can even cause nightmares and very bad dreams. Another very noticeable thing in the deficiency of kidney yin is that, obviously, the fluids dry up. Depending on the severity and the time we have been with this deficiency, the joints, for example, start to dry up too. Sometimes we cannot calculate how our marrow, our brain, our eyes dry up, but the joints are something that is noticeable. The knees, the waist and the vertebrae can start to hurt because the space between the vertebrae, for example, dries up and hardens. The tendons become stiff. The muscles lack moisture. Injuries start to occur more frequently. The whole body is drying up. Although at a more local level in the lower area where the kidney is, there is also the bladder. The kidney filters and sends liquids to the bladder for elimination. There will also be valuable information there, such as the gradual turbidity of urine, the drying of the urina urinary tract, the slight pain during urination, the presence of pain and burning, and over time, as more and more fluids evaporate, more sediment starts to accumulate in the kidney, which may one day lead to infections, kidney stones, and so on. All those things can happen. The bladder, like a drying ocean, leaves behind, leaves behind on this sudden. What is most striking, what we will see most frequently, and what I believe is most important for you to understand, is the relationship between the kidney and the liver. The liver is an organ that, like the great explosion of the spring, will bring its harmonious passion to our heart, to the summer, the liver will make us explode and move and make us do what we're created to do. And it will drive us through instinct. Many people, if not the majority of people, are somehow educated, somehow confined and frustrated, directed or used by others, and they put that expansion, which knows no limits and which would only serve the Great Spirit, for all the purpose. That is a form of frustration, a form of, form of confinement, and as I mentioned before, the liver is the last organ to be treated that way because it is a force too, too great to be contained. There's a syndrome called liver energy stagnation. It's like an arrested spring. It's a pressure cooking, waiting to explode, and gradually it becomes a monster. Pressure, resistance, tension are characteristics that lead to anger and self-harm. The liver stagnation syndrome can be mild or severe, and in severe cases, the organ becomes inflamed, painful, oppressed, and the production of bile is altered. The force starts to spread over the stomach, burning, pressing and squeezing too. If it gets out of control during the peak of a specific crisis, it can attack the heart, it can attack the mind, rising aggressively because, remember, summer always follows spring in the liver cycle. If it receives too much intensity, it affects the heart. It is too much violence, isn't it? The same happens in the head. All these symptoms, such as an including neck stiffness, 
bringing the ears, falling and red eyes, bleeding gums, and high blood pressure are caused by the relationship between the liver and the kidneys. That poor relationship is what makes this condition worsen much faster. The stagnant liver produces heat because anything that stagnates eventually produces heat. And that heat starts to consume the yin. But if on top of that, we have already depleted the kidney's yin, where there used to be an underground river or an Amazon that would control the heat, nothing is left. And then, at any moment, a stagnant liver with heat, fire, and completely out of control, causes the fire to rise and burn. That's when the pathologies I mentioned earlier occur. Does it have an even greater peak? Then the fire is very intense and there is nothing to control it because it moves very quickly. And that's what generates wind. Now it's not only the possibility of affecting the heart or head, but we can start trembling, like with Parkinson's disease or other diseases with internal wind. They can only be resolved by unblocking the liver and hopefully that will be enough, but it may not be. To calm the liver's fire, to make it circulate properly, above all, we must increase body moisture and nourish, nourishing the kidney yin. Which is not easy. It takes time, unfortunately. Deficiencies are difficult to solve. Exercises are not as difficult. Recovering from a deficiency is complicated, especially when it has been prolonged, prolonged and even caused changes in bodily structures. All these are the most common ailments. Many people live with it, get used to feeling anxious and nervous in their daily lives, and seek a very bad solution, such as drugs, alcohol. And people joke about it, but it's no joke. Especially when we have already entered a trend. What happens with trends? If you throw a stone down a cliff, what will happen after 10 seconds? The stone will accelerate. And trends do the same. Trends only amplify in the direction indicated by the arrow. This will inevitably worsen if we, don't, if we do nothing. We were not made to have an identity and invent where, where we're going and who we are. We're just such fragile little creatures, so simple, so sensitive, that we were made and designed to be an emanation of this eternity, and that eternity and all its side. And we have been we have been talking about will take us without us having to do anything, without without us intervening in the process, without bothering, without interrupting the power. And power is when a person has surrendered to their instinct and their spirit. Let it carry them with faith and without resistance. They tell me, you're a powerful man, my man. I respond, I am like the youngest child because I just let myself be carried. But people understand a powerful man as someone who fights against all currents and carries weapons and has tremendous pride. That is not power. That is the yang of the liver with the deficiency of yang. But we encounter this in the media in some way. Fear a man capable of killing another man, committing such madness. They say that men of the spirit, like those of the Shua people, for example, are free because they fought for what they were. And for this, and if good men fight, we will have a better world, not the bad man who is insane, with an, with an out-of-control yang, who doesn't care about destroying people's lives or abusing them. We must not allow that, because that person is sick. For example, in the Shua community, the leader, the leader of the group had, that stood up 
um, was the one who went to the waterfall to take the bath, and the Rutan spoke to him by showing him visions. Afterwards, during a mutual reflection among the best warriors, this was the person they followed. It is the spirit that determines us and the one that leads us, and the spirit chooses that person. We can follow that person if we want to, but not the disturbed, selfish individual who hurt families, the elderly, and who doesn't even want to think about what he is doing, because he is not even capable of accepting the consequences of his actions with his stagnant and proud leader. The consequence of all this is a swollen liver. High, blo high blood pressure, night sweats or sweating, or sweating during the day, accelerated metabolism, but we only get scared when finally the blow to the heart comes. Because remember, the first, the first comes spring, then summer comes, followed by late summer, autumn, and the return to winter, where we eventually die. It is then at the end when we will see what happens, and that takes time. The burden keeps increasing, the tendency keeps growing, and, this, and when summer comes, boom, the palpitations, the tachycardia, arrive. The heart beats stronger due to the energy of heat the creative impulsive impulse that is out of control and velocity is heat with a lot of heat the heart accelerates there is a heat in the heart due to the deficiency of yin in the heart because yin is drying up and it starts beating fast the other heat it's the impact of the liver's yang on the heart making it beat stronger and stronger there is another syndrome of blood deficiency in the heart, which is milder, and we will see later on. So that's when the person says they can't live like this anymore, and begins to get scared, and starts taking measures. But they don't take them until the last moment, when summer comes. I'm not referring to the summer that occurs every year, not the seasonal summer within the annual cycle. Although that also has an influence because a hot summer wasn't everything. I'm talking about the summer of the patient's life, especially the late summer. What age would we assign it to a man? A man reaches it later than a woman, right? I would say starting at 40, although it also depends on each person. But based on my experience, it is my male patients in their 40s who start telling me that their heart beats stronger and accelerates. All the tough guys at the gym, or the arrogant people, the wealthy, all those who didn't think about the harm they caused with their pride, starting from their 40s, they start having these palpitations. In other words, they reached their peak, enjoyed it a little, and it was enough for the body to say, you've exhausted me, I endured as much as I could, now start facing the consequences. And it also coincides with the body's decline towards late summer. And nothing is the same anymore because you start going downhill. That's when regret begins. Of course, this can happen much earlier. You can even have a heart attack much earlier. It all depends on the intensity, on being able to read the mistakes we are making with our stagnant liver. And one last thing regarding the yin of kidney, by the way. Because the truth is, there are honorable warriors, great colonels who invaded great places and were not sexually perverted but they were completely corrupted by achieving their objectives. And they have no time for anything else. Maybe these guys were in combat and didn't drink alcohol. Or maybe they were, there was a whole tradition like Shaolin, a disciplinary tradition where they say those things should not be done. And that's a problem because they last longer years. They are capable of withstanding the impact of the liver's yang and the stagnation and heat of the liver for a much longer time. And the heart is endures much longer because they are in better condition, their energy, 
and the balance is also in better condition. In the end, it's better for them to quickly destroy themselves with drugs, vices, alcohol, alcohol and all that, so that their wicked life doesn't last long. But the great de geniuses of history or the great military leaders, many of them, especially those from ancient times, knew about this thing, not because they studied them, but because they had great physicians close to them, or maybe because their tradition contained that knowledge. It seems like we are living in a void now. I would say a great brainwashing, a great historical brainwashing. We are writing a new history and we are losing the thousands of years of tradition we had. For example, in Argentina, I believe that you know very little you came to a land and haven't learned from your ancestors, from the cultures of the native people who lived here. Imagine the richness of all that people and how much better life would have been if you had learned from them here. I went to the jungle, I learned from the Shua, and I also brought some of my knowledge with me and helped a lot, as much as I learned from them. And now I can speak like this thanks to that. We are losing values and teachings that worked for thousands of years. In the Shua community, they told me that they need to dwell in old age. And without illnesses, we are losing those opportunities. And that it's unfair. In all traditions, this can exist. There is something similar to what I am teaching. Perhaps in a more indirect manner. But it is like when grandparents used to say, this but not that. You need, and all, it's all related to this natural knowledge. You actually already know it. I'm just reminding you, that's why it's easy and you hardly take notes. You need to understand this relationship of excesses between the kidney, the liver and the heart. Later, we will see the opposite within this relationship, which is much more simpler. And it is a deficiency of cold coldness passing through the spleen, the lung, and back to the kidney.